Thanks for tuning in to Coda Country Chats with me, Lee, with Coda Country. This is our first time talking to a new artist out of Nashville. This is Cody Cause. How are you today, Cody? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm so good. And I'm I'm glad that you finally decided to sit down and talk with me because I have been dying to get you on this podcast. Um, just because I, I follow a lot of what you do and um, I feel like you and I were very close to like running into each other at CMA Fest and that didn't happen and I'm sad. Um, but yeah, so I'm so glad that I could finally talk to you today. And there's a lot to talk about with Cody. Um, if you are not a follower of Cody Cause, uh, would you do me a favor and shout out like your social media handles or your website or anything where yeah, all of absolutely. our listeners follow? Yeah. So I'm, I'm all, all across the board, the same. It's just at Cody cause music. So that's Cody C O Z Z. Um, and then as far as my website goes, that's my website's Cody cause official.com. And I just launched my merch site and that's shop Cody cause.com. So that's awesome. I'm going to have to hit up some of that merch because I love Definitely. concert tees. Yeah. Um, okay. So I was scrolling through your website and your link tree and all of that stuff as I do my research. And I wanted to point out to the listeners that you just celebrated the year anniversary of your debut single. So congratulations yes. to you. Thank you very much. Of course. Could you tell me a little bit about um, how that came to be and the recording process putting the single out, all of that. I would love to hear. Absolutely. So I, I guess, you know, that, like I said, like you said, that was my uh, first song t that I ever put out. Um, and it was an experience like no other. Um, you know, I, I think when I first started music, I obviously never, I, I would say it's similar to everybody's story. You never expect the, the um, success or the directions that, you know, it takes to get to like the actual Nashville, um, experience of putting out a song. I think anyone can really put out a song, but you know, there's a, there's a process for doing it like the right way. And, you know, I don't think anyone is prepared for how much actually goes into it. Um, you know, and so that was kind of an eye opening experience for me. And I guess for the first year that I started working in Nashville, it was just, that was what it was, was just complete wide eyed experiences the whole time. And, um, you know, as far as the, my song on my way is concerned, it was, just, just, it just hit, you know, I, I was not a, a writer on the song, but, um, you know, the, that was kind of the initial push was let's get something out to the people, but you know, you, you have all the time in the world to put out original music. So let's get something out that people want to listen to that we know is going to be good. And, you know, I know that when we were going through songs, this was this, it was always the number one, you know, and, um, there was just something about it that I resonated with. I was, you know, kind of fresh out of a breakup at that time. So, you know, my, my passion behind it was kind of, and it's a love song, which, you know, it's not a breakup song, but the, the passion behind it was like, man, I remember feeling this way about somebody. So I know that, um, you know, everybody can kind of relate to that, truly passionate kind of fresh first love puppy dog phase of the relationship where you just cannot wait to get to your person you know and yeah. um you're you're doing everything you can to like to get there or like you, you know there's just nothing that can hold you back and um you know that was what we really tried to portray in the song when it came to the music video everything and you know, I was fortunate enough to have the song hit radio and it made it to 178 stations across the U.S. Cool. And uh, I also was able to do a music video that debuted on CMT Music, which was amazing. Yeah. You know, it was mm -hmm. just for a guy that, you know, was working construction four years ago. You know, it was <laughs> like it was just unbelievable. And, um, you know, I would say that that's been the majority of my experience so far um, is just unbelievable moments that you know I don't take for granted and we're just kind of rolling with it and seeing seeing where it takes me and um yeah it's been an amazing thing so far so that's an awesome journey of that song and now knowing a little bit more of the background I can appreciate it more well and then so fast forwarding a little bit um because that was dropped back in October November that was uh that was June of 22. June. Oh, yeah. God, because it's a year. What am I saying? Um, so 
with that, you just released a new single uh, about a month ago, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I'm just a country song is also kind of a lovey, lovey, right. lovey song, just like you explaining how, um, you know, how you're take it as you see it. And that's an awesome way to be. Are you a writer on that song? Oh, co-write. Yeah. And so, oh, good. yeah. So those were, those were kind of cool to be a part of and, you know, just really express, uh, you know, I've, because of Craig, my, my mentor is Craig Campbell, which, you know, is a country music legend. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, he's been so instrumental in just getting me around the right people. And, um, you know, it's a very rare thing when you, when you can get like a true artist that's made it to like hold the door, the door open for you. And I've been really fortunate with that, you know, and it's, um, it's been such a blessing to, to be a part of his rights and to let me just kind of meet his friends. And it's something I don't take lightly. I think, you know, that I work extremely hard because of that. It's, it's mm -hmm. been awesome. And that's kind of what just, I'm just a country song is for, for me, it's got a lot of, you know, behind like several meanings. I'm just a country song being that just country music in general has changed my life. And, um, that's something I'm very proud of to say. And like, um, I don't plan on doing anything else and, you know, I don't, I can't imagine doing anything else as of right now. And, um, and so then the other side of that as well is just, you know, as the listener, I want pe I wanted people to be able to attach themselves to a song that was like, you know, I'm just a country song and we all have moments in our lives that we can attach ourselves to, whether it's sad, happy, you know, oh, just yeah. hanging out with your friends, you know, a love or a heartbreak or, you know, even, even death, you know, or, or new life. And it's, there's, there's a song that I think we can all kind of relate to, um, that pinpoints us back to a certain place in time. And, and I was very hopeful that this was that song for somebody, you know, at some point. And it's just amazing. Cause I get videos almost weekly from just, you know, fans singing the song and, um, you know, I've, I've been on a 20 show run this last month and just being wow. able to kind of, um, be around people that even, even if it's five people in the audience that know who I am at all, like if I'm opening for an artist or whatever, and you know, they're wearing my shirt or they're singing my song, it's just the best feeling in the world. You know, I, it's a, it's a feeling that you definitely chase. So. Wow. Yeah. And 20 shows in a row that, that is a pretty long, long chase there, oh, yeah. but Hey, you're, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're doing it. And that's, that's incredible. Um, going back to Craig Campbell and your mentorship there. So that has, you have a really cool story. Yeah. Um, just coming through your music career and, and how you came to be. So I would love to hear, and I know the listeners would too, they would love to hear more about that. So go right ahead yeah. and, and share that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm originally from Colorado. Um, and I had just started playing kind of randomly. I posted a video singing, uh, reasons by Luke Combs on Facebook. Wow. And that was like in May of 2020. And, um, I got reached out to by this, uh, kind of, he was a bigger guy in my hometown. He put on a country music festival called bands in the backyard, but he also owned this Italian restaurant. Um, and during the whole COVID thing, you know, they, some places were figuring out ways around to be able to stay, stay open. And that was what he did. He put like this big tent outside his facility and, you know, just tables and whatever. And, um, he had actually seen the video and it had, it had done pretty well. And he had reached out to me and said, Hey, would you want to play, you know, a show? And I, and at that particular time, you know, I was, like I said, I was fresh out of a breakup and, um, you know, I was playing college football and that ended, you know, because of COVID. So I was really had nothing. My identity was very much just stripped at that time. Aww, and, wow. and so I was really praying for something to just get me out of, uh, out of the house or, and which was tough at that particular time, you know, there weren't, weren't a lot of things going on and I wasn't allowed to see a lot of my friends just, just from rules or their, their friends or their family's rules, whatever. So you know, I was very secluded. And so, um, I just felt like this was what, you know, of all the things that were telling me to say no, like there was one in particular, I felt like this was God's sign for me that I was 
you know, praying about, um, that I should just say yes. And like, so I said yes. And he had asked if I'd ever done it before. And I said, no, or I, I did tell him that I had done it before. Um, and so <laughs> I actually lied just so I could land this opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that was June 5th of 2020. And, um, so I actually did a interview yesterday, kind of timelining this whole thing out for them. And so it's kind of, now I know the time frames with everything. Um, so that was my first gig and it was in an Italian restaurant and I kind of never looked back. And then I remember it was about October of that same, uh, year that I met Craig and I opened for him at a, at a bigger stage. So I grew really fast in a really short span of months and, um, got this opportunity to open for him was obviously freaking out. It was kind of like my first, I, you know, right before him, I opened for uh, a guy who just recently made his Opry debut. His name's Chancey Williams. Um, and he's an artist from Wyoming and he's phenomenal. Um, and so that was a great experience as well. And kind of introduced me to just the professional side of music. Um, and so being able to experience that and then going straight into one with Craig, I felt a little more prepared on what, what to do, what to expect. But what I kind of really wasn't aware of was the, the, you know, being an entertainer and a performer, not just like a singer. And so I was still learning how to stand when I played, (laughs) I was still, I was still sitting on a stool and I, I had a big binder and I still have this binder full of like 60 songs, um, that I used to put like right in front of me while I was singing. And so it was kind of a funny thing, um, that I wasn't like really prepared to actually play. Um, but it, you know, that was, you got to start somewhere and I just didn't know better, you know? And so I kind of, I met Craig that day and, um, I had, I, like I said, I had opened for him and, um, I ended up going after up to him after my set. And I was like, Hey, you know, Craig, I'd, I'd, if you have, I said, Mr. Campbell, I was like, would you, you know, spare 20 minutes, um, at the end of your set, I'd love to just like pick your brain. And, um, somebody actually got it on camera. Like they took a picture of that actual moment and I have it. I actually, it's actually my screensaver on my phone as well as (laughs) framed up in my apartment because that moment literally in time changed my life. And, um, I remember he was so gracious and just so humble. And he just said, He's like, I'll do you one better, bud. Take my number down and call me on Monday. So I, I get, you know, this famous guy's number and I'm freaking out. I remember I just started crying to my brother. (laughs) Um, you know, I just felt like I was so unworthy of it and, and it was just a crazy experience. And so I called him on Monday and he talked to me for a couple hours and just let me ask anything I wanted. And, um, you know, he just basically told me every nook and cranny of how bad I was as a far as a performer, basically. Like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you need to get rid of the binder. You need to get, you know, you need to stand and play. He's got You got to talk to the crowd. You know, I would get better equipment. Like, so, and so, you know, that was what I needed. And so I got all this new equipment. I followed every piece of advice that he said. And, um, it was about seven months later, I, was working on a construction site and I got a phone call from this venue that said, Hey, we know you've opened for Craig before the guy that was coming with him to play from Nashville got COVID. He can't fly. Is there any way we can get you to come and open for him? And so I was like, I called my boss and I said, I'm got to do this, you know? So I, um, drove home from this construction site, grabbed my guitar, took a quick shower and headed as fast as I could out to this venue to try to get there in time. And, um, ended up making it in time. And he, Craig embraced me like with this big hug, which I wasn't expecting at all. And, um, I was, you know, I had, like I said, I had spent seven months following his advice since the first time I had talked. And so I was so ready for the moment. Like I was just, I had played with a bunch of other artists. I had worked on a lot of things and 
I was just really excited more than anything to just show him that I, you know, followed his advice to a T. I mean, it was, yeah. I got the equipment that he said, everything. And so I, I end up opening for him. It was a killer show. Probably one of my best as far as just being ready to, to like, if I had something to prove that was the moment, you know, I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And so at the very end, he comes up to me and he's like, he gives me this like high five and he looks me right in the face. He said, he said, Hey bud, I'm a fan. He's like, I took some video down. Um, I'm going to show it to some friends of mine and kind of pass it along. And he said, I think you got the if factor. And he said, I can't guarantee you anything, but, um, you know, I'm going to see what I can do. And about a week later he calls me and he just said, Hey bud, you ready to come to Nashville? And, um, you know, that was kind of when it started. And so we just had started the process of, of when I was going to go out there, you know, kind of just, you know, there was a feeling out process of, you know, if I was going to take this serious, if I was ready for what this life has to, to give, I mean, as you know, it's just a different way of life. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's not all like, I guess, great things all the time. And there's, <laughs> and I think, uh, it's kind of a, kind of an interesting thing that you have to like be prepared for. And, you know, he was willing to share all the, the goods and bads of it with me. And, um, you know, I, I'm very thankful that I've kind of experienced a lot of those here in, in Colorado, my home state, you know, um, and then was able to just get a lot of that learning stuff out of my system before I came to Nashville. And then, um, yeah. And then Craig ended up opening a label and he signed me. I was his first artist that he signed. And then, um, wow. I've had, you know, a couple songs on the radio and obviously some, some really great things happen. And I've just been living on that for the last, you know, four years now that I guess that I've been doing this. So I've been with him for, for almost two years. We're going on two years with him. So but it's been great. That's amazing. So, yeah, to hear all of that, I only, I can describe it almost as like a divine, absolutely. Happening. like everything that you needed in your life just kind of fell into place. And that is that sometimes that's kind of how, you know, that it's yes. right, that you're where you're supposed to be. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, and to hear you describe it. So I guess humbly is very inspiring just because, wow, that's, it's a really cool story to tell. Oh my gosh, look at you. Um, okay, so we talked a little bit about your background and your release music. Um, for the listeners out there who have never seen Cody perform live, he's opened up for artists like Craig Campbell, um, Mitchell Tenpenny, John Party, Travis Tritt. Let's talk a little bit about performing yeah. live because I know you were just telling us about how, you know, when you first started, um, you brought the binder out and now you're all seasoned and you, you know how to stand and stuff like that. Um, tell me what would you say has been your most like favorite performance? Um, I know you talked about the second time right. you opened for Craig and how it just, you know, kind of was an amazing thing that just kind of happened. But would you say that's your favorite or, or would you say that there's, Gosh, I, I think there's, there's right. a lot, you know, back then it was, I was really just solely an acoustic act. Um, I, I've mm -hmm. since then have, uh, you know, I've got a band and we have like a, a true show, you know, going on. And, cool. um, I would say there's a couple that stand out for me. Um, one, I, I got to play in front of Easton Corbin. Um, I've played with him four times now, which is crazy, cool. but, um, yeah. Well, there one in particular, I think it was the second time that I played with him. Um, I just, you know, everything was on point. I, I think the, and not to take away from Easton Corbin at all. He's amazing. He's got a, <laughs> he's, yeah. you know, ha a loyal fan base, everything. But, you know, when I played with him that night, the audience was like, it, it felt like they were there for me. You know what I mean? Like we had sold, we had gotten kind of added to his uh, show last, not last minute, but kind of last minute. And yeah. the venue had called and they were like, they, I was just really excited. I mean, they were, 
they called me and they, they gave me this kind of small praise of, man, we added you to this bill and we, you know, we saw ticket sales increase like crazy. Um, and then I remember in the audience in particular, like, I would say it was probably the first, you know, five or six rows of this venue, which was a 2000 cap room. Um, and it was a sold out show. And, you know, when you, when you're looking at 2000 people and, you know, it seems like the first five rows of this audience or more are there for you. It's like, whoa, this is wild, you know? And that was kind of the first time I remember anyone singing my songs back to me. Um, Mm -hmm. And it just, everything was going right. You know, like my voice was just great. The band was killing it where just the energy was there. And definitely I remember that one vividly. Um, I remember when I played with, there, there was another cool moment when I, it started raining when I played with John Party. And Mm -hmm. we had ended up getting shut down off the stage, but we had gotten to play we were, we were about six or seven songs in and the guy looks he, you know, I look side stage or whatever. And he got my attention and he was like one more. Um, and so I was like, all right, we're gonna end this with a bang. So we played naturally, we closed with, you know, friends in low places, uh, because it just felt right in the moment, you know? And I, I remember like, it was kind of an out of body experience, like, uh, I remember telling the audience, I was like, they're kicking me off stage. So let's make this count. Like, and, and I was like, uh, it was raining like crazy. And I remember, um, my drummer was hitting the drums and just like the rain was shooting off. And it was like, it was like a vid, you know, like a video. Uh, and that was, that was a very cool moment. Just the audience again was just crazy. Um, and then the last one that I'd say really sticks out for me, um, was when I got to open, I had played with Craig several times. I'd known him for, you know, I've known him for almost three and a half years now. Um, but it wasn't up until about like maybe last spring that I got to play with Craig full band, a show, a full band show. He had never seen me play a full band show. And, you know, we pr- kind of promoted it as that. It's like, you know, every, if, if you know who I am, you know, my story, you know, my relationship with Craig and like, this is a big moment. So you don't want to miss it, you know? And, <laughs> awesome. and so, uh, you know, I remember he, he, again, the most of the time, that's one thing that's different with Craig. Most of the time artists don't ever watch the openers at all. And, which is yeah. fine. Like there's nothing against that. You know, they, we all have our routines. I am no different. Like I have my rituals. I got to warm up, you know, and whatever. Mm-hmm. But Craig is definitely different in that regard that he enjoys watching people because he's just that type of a guy, you know, and, um, and he, mm-hmm. him and the guys, his band, which I've gone on the road with him before. Um, he took me on my first bus tour ever. And, Um, I got to spend time with his band and, you know, we traveled, you know, to all these different States and played. And, um, so I've, I had known his band for a while and the last show was actually the one I was going to get to play the full band show for. So I was on the road with these guys for like quite a while. And then the closing out show of that run was this, uh, you know, so it was just a, it it was just a phenomenal moment and uh yeah and we got to you know we opened open for him and like the audience again just was electric and he was you know it was amazing to be able to have him sit there and watch me just become an artist you know and I think he was so proud um because I do work extremely hard to make him proud and make it worth it and you know, and just like the same with his band guys, you know, I, um, you know, they, it was just like, they were like proud dads, you know, um, because it's, <laughs> it's just one of those things I think that's cool maybe for them to, they've been through it, you know, they, they were at a starting point at one point and, you know, to see somebody young like me kind of working really hard to, you know, and Craig has truly seen my journey from, 
the inception, you know, it was Mm -hmm. where I kind of never really, it it was to the point of, he saw me where I was just doing it for fun and never had any expectation Mm -hmm. to go outside of Colorado to now I have, you know, he's helped me get to a point where, you know, I'm a true pro in the, in the industry now. And like, I used to kind of, you know, talk to him in a way where, He's just an extremely encouraging guy specifically for me because I remember there's been several moments even up to recently where I'm just like, you know, do you want me to be a part of this part of it or like should you, you know, like whatever. And he's like, dude, you're in it like you're you've done it like you just have to keep the pedal down and you're doing all the right things yeah. and just believe that, mm-hmm. you know, you need to accept the fact that you know, if you want to be part of this, you have to accept the fact that you're part of this too. Like you can't be so humble that you just have no confidence in yourself and you don't feel like you're a part of a business, you know? And so like, he helps me get past a lot of those mental blocks and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, he's just, he's just awesome. So those are, those are three, three for sure that stand out for me, but there's so many that, you know, I could go on and on about. Yeah. And I was, so I want to ask you a little bit um, before we get into yeah. like the shows that you have coming yes. up because you have a ton of stuff coming up. Um, okay. So you were talking about like a, a pre-show ritual. Um, I would love <laughs> to know, like, what do you do in your pre-show ritual? Absolutely. I'm going off script here because yeah. I never asked this question. So but I my know pre-show that. ritual is I definitely start like my vocal warmups earlier than I would say probably most people. Mm-hmm. Um, well, okay. And you, I... My day yeah. job is a choir teacher. So like, obviously I'm about it. What do you do? What's so like, what's I, your go-to? I have, a, it right I now. will go <laughs> into the bathroom where the mm-hmm. acoustics are just solid, you know? And I just, mm-hmm. so, you know, the song, can't you see, uh, by yeah. Marshall Tucker. Yeah. Marshall yeah. Tucker. So I'll, uh-huh. I'll, yeah. I'll start by humming that like while I'm playing my guitar mm-hmm. and I just kind of. And then I'll work in some runs while I'm humming it and kind of work myself up. Then I'll just start kind of singing it. And that song kind of helps me just like break up the pipes a little bit. Um, and then I kind of feel fairly good. I don't, I don't try to over sing cause I have done that before where the, by the time the show comes mm-hmm. around, I I'm dry and I'm just hoarse already and it's just bad. So I've, oh. I've, I've learned. Yes. And then I also, if I don't feel like doing that or it doesn't work out where I can get in to start pre-singing, like I have a little app on my phone that kind of gets me through a, you know, type of thing. And cool. Yeah. yeah we yeah. love the troll moment. And yeah. then, uh, <laughs> the last thing is potato chips. So I will, yes, Lay's really? potato chips apparently. <laughs> and it, this could totally be a placebo thing, but somebody, Somebody told me once <laughs> I had like a sore throat after a few shows and somebody was like, you need to get some honey and some potato chips, late regular Lay's potato chips. And I was like, why? And they said, well, it's several things. So the crunchiness and like the hardness of the chips open up your throat. And then the oil, the oils really? of the okay. uh, chip, like lubricate mm-hmm. your throat. So it helps it kind of moisten up and like, and I'm not kidding you. I, you know, if I, Ever since that, like, <laughs> again, it could be totally placebo effect, but like I did it that one day and I felt like I sang so great. So then I've done it ever since. And I'm not <laughs> kidding. Like if I can't somehow get a bag of chips to, and it has to be regular lays too. It can't be, it's yes. <laughs> and, ask, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think somebody told me that the same goes with like McDonald's French fries. It's like the same thing. So you can either, you can do one or the other, yeah, but okay. I've always done the chips thing <laughs> and I, I don't know, mm-hmm. it works for me. So like I said, I don't know if it's a mental block or, or not, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's, that's, that's definitely one of it, but. <laughs> that's so funny that you say that. No, I, you'll have to we're try gonna have to try that now. I don't know. That's. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Cool. Um, <laughs> I love hearing that kind of stuff though. Cause you know, like artists always have that like weird, I don't know, like a oh, yeah. Eminem thing or like a have right. to put something in their teeth, you know, like, yes. so that's your thing. 
Then and I, I feel like I feel like I'm so <laughs> like I didn't even know about vocal warm ups till probably last year. And then somebody was like, no, you need to be doing that. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to ruin your voice, which mm-hmm. I will say, you know, it's definitely changed because so I don't know if I'm doing it right or not. I just kind of fi- figured out how to do it. And like, you know, I've ran with it ever since. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, I mean, that's that was what this guy told me. He was like, this, you know, this is your money maker so if you don't protect it and you don't treat it right you know you're gonna you're gonna regret it and uh so you know it's just little things but yeah as far as rituals and stuff I've I feel like I'm I get so amped up sometimes that I like I'm so excited to go out because I don't really get nervous anymore I just get an adrenaline rush and like you know that right before you go on stage you kind of have to go calm a little bit otherwise you get breathy you know and you kind of then you do that first song you're just real dry Mm -hmm. you know and it's like so Uh sometimes I've done this before Mm -hmm. like if I am nervous for a show and I kind of feel like I've I've crossed that too far in uh adrenaline rush I'll put a piece of gum in before I go out on my first song and then I'll just swallow it after the first song (laughs) That's so, terrible. Don't swallow your gum. I know what the, oh my god! So I probably have. I probably got about thirty pieces of gum in me over a while. <laughs> <laughs> that is so silly. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I feel like we're going to wrap up soon, but I want to hear a little bit about what you have going on in the future as far as shows that are coming up. Yes. Because I know you have a ton. So let's yeah, where, absolutely. Where you're so be. I started. I started a. I wouldn't call it a tour, but I started a, a run of shows um, right at the kind of end of the end of June traveling. We went to Memphis, we went to Kentucky, we went to Georgia. And then I've been back here in Colorado kind of re I was, I spent about five months away from Colorado and you know, that's, it's all fine and good, but you know, this is kind of where my flame started and you got to make sure that you, you know, keep your, I feel like I'm growing something very similar to what the Texas artists do. You know, it's just a little more old school yeah. in the way it's that it's done. But I also feel like that's still, you know, even in the TikTok world we live in, that's still the way to really grow a true long lasting foundation. Um, and I enjoy Absolutely. meeting my fans. You know, I, I really do. I enjoy meeting the supporters who are helping me get to where they're just helping me achieve my dreams, you know. And so, uh, we've had quite a few headliner shows. We, um, like I said, we've played about 20 shows in a month, which has been, it's been a lot, you know, but Mm -hmm. I, sometimes I feel like I haven't, like, I'm like, we need to do more. And then I'll talk to like somebody, you know, within the music industry, they're like, well, our, our artist hasn't played a show in a year. And I'm like, holy cow, you know? their, their, their whole focus is like social media, which is to each his own. But you know, it's, I, I like my approach. Sometimes I definitely need to be better about TikTok, but, um, some of the, I know some of the, some of the things (laughs) I've got coming up, um, where I'm actually this, this Saturday playing my first arena show, which is going to be sweet. Um, I'm actually headlining it and we're really close to selling it out. So, um, I know. So we're, we're really excited about that. We, uh, like I said, we've had quite a few headliners this run. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to sell out two of them. Um, and just this run alone, I think we we're going to, after this weekend, depending on how the ticket thing goes, we've sold hard sale tickets, about 6,000 tickets. So just in total, this whole run. So it's pretty exciting. And then I know, and, uh, then, uh, I'll come back. We, we finish out, I'll come back to Tennessee August 7th, kind of regroup for a couple of days and then head down to Georgia on the 11th, um, in Statesboro. And then, um, I think I'll be kind of done for a little bit, just taking some time off, um, to kind of, you know, just again, reestablish time in Nashville and kind of write a little bit more, just even just hang out with some friends, you know, and regroup. And then, um, we play with Travis Tritt or we play with Corey Kent September 3rd and yeah. Yeah. So we just got added to that one and then we're playing with the, the biggest one Mm -hmm. is we're playing with a concert hall with Travis Tritt in September. So September 21st. And then uh, we have some shows sprinkled in with there too. So we're going to try to keep adding some, uh, some shows, but I'm playing my first amphitheater September 12th. Um, 
trying to think of what else we got. Um, yeah, it'll, it's just really exciting. We just, you know, we just recently kind of have, have started talking to this really big booking agency, um, just as of like two weeks ago. Um, and one of their high ups in their business kind of, he came to one of my shows randomly and just was like, man, you know, I want mm-hmm. you part of this circuit. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I really am. We sent that in and he's going to get me all certified and we're going to start doing all that. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of announce that at some point here when it, when it really gets official. And, yeah, you know, like I said, I think it's just like a, a lot of really amazing things have happened that, you know, we're, we're just kind of, I got my first brand deal with rock and roll denim. That's why I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> rock and roll so, denim. That's uh, right. Yeah. yeah so, uh, <laughs> awesome. you know, we're just, yeah. we're figuring it out. You know, it's, I think that's all that really anyone in this business is doing is trying to just figure it out. So yeah, just figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I really enjoyed talking to you today. Um, and your show in Georgia, I'm mad because I live like the exact opposite <laughs> end of the state. Otherwise I would come see you. Um, yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to? I know yeah. that you've shouted out Craig Morgan a lot, but anybody else out there that you just want yeah. to give a shout out to? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, today? definitely shout out to my, my manager, Peyton Heben with 22 entertainment. He works his butt off, um, for me and has helped change my career and a lot of things. And he's, he, in his own right, has had some amazing things happen for him. And, um, you know, I'm very proud of him for, we've both been in Nashville for just a little bit over a year, if not a year alone. And, um, you know, so to, to hear some of the feedback that we get mutually or just, you know, about each other and it's, it's just super encouraging, you know, and like, um, so definitely a big shout out to him. And, and then, uh, my sister, I know my sister, she'll watch this too. She watches all my stuff. She's 11. Aww. So shout out to my sister. <laughs> shout out to my That's sister, so Carly. Otherwise she'll be, she's cause she'll freak out about it and she'll be like, I'm, I'm famous now. <laughs> 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 yes, you are famous, Carly. Okay. Well, listeners out there, thanks so much for tuning in and hearing more about Cody cause. Um, there are a ton of questions that I did not get to ask you today. So I feel like I'm going to have to have you back on sooner or later. So yeah, for sure. Okay. This is Lee and Cody with Coda country. Thank you so much. Have a good day.